Okay, so this is um, a show mostly about um, the work I've been doing with strangers in the past two years. And um, it started with a project um, on the back wall that I was doing called Intimate Belonging. And I went out about twice a week um, and photographed stranger, the contents of strangers' purses, and then I would interview them about what was inside. And um, most of the time people would say, there's nothing interesting in my purse, but um, that's not true. <laughs> and it was kind of a way to, to facilitate a kind of broader dialogue about their identity and, and kind of what they valued. And um, yeah, just more kind of um, ways for them to tell their stories, I guess. And so, um, yeah, it kind of started, I was thinking I really wanted to work with strangers and I found it was hard. Um, obviously to get people to want to be, have their portrait taken. And what I found interesting about it was that they had no, as long as they weren't being filmed or um, photographed, people would say anything. And even though I'm recording it, you know, so that was a really interesting thing. And what I ended up doing was, um, I was kind of thinking about like, you know, the ethics of photography and um, what, what kind of ex exchange takes place when you, um, when you do work with, someone else, especially a stranger, and so I ended up making these trading cards out of other people's purses and putting like statistics on the back, like where I encountered the purse and what notable objects and um, a quote from the owner and giving them to people who I would um, take photos of. <laughs> um, and that kind of became like a web to connect all these people together and kind of make this um, portrait of community through this action. So yeah, so that's kind of where the, the project started. Um, and then kind of concurrently about a year later, when I, after I'd started that purse project, um, I was living in a building that was sold to developers and we were asked to leave in a very short amount of time that was kind of, normally you have two or three months and we had not that much time. And so um, it was this really interesting building. It had about 12 units in it. And um, I was thinking about personal connection to space and the layers of significance that can exist within a space. Um, and then how quickly that can just go away. And so as a way to kind of um, kind of just put a p more positive spin on what was happening, I started interviewing everyone in my building and taking photos of their space. And it was the same thing, like um, I didn't think about taking photos of them. Um, and even though I think that you know their belongings are so personal, they didn't seem to have a problem at all having um, their spaces photographed or being interviewed. Um, which I found interesting because it was so intimate. But it was really good. We had this, you know, so I, I was kind of asking them, um, you know, what are you going to remember most about the building? And can you tell me, like, a, a story about living here that was significant? And so, um, yeah, I ended up making a few zines about that and postcards. And I would take the postcards and actually plant them in. Because I was thinking about postcards, it's like um, when you're on vacation and you send someone a postcard, it's the essence of a place that you're trying to send them. And I was thinking about how Victoria is so, it's changing so quickly. And we're losing all these, um, I mean, we have a housing crisis that's pretty extreme. Um, but also, you know, the essence of a place is the personal connection for me. So, you know, I'd have these kind of like banal postcards like this. <laughs> um, and then I'd put an owner quote on the back and I'd start planting them in um, tourist shops. And then I actually tried buying them just to see if they would... I could buy them, and I could, so <laughs> that was <laughs> interesting. Um, but yeah, so then I ended up, I was thinking about, um, you know, these stories, and I built this kind of sound booth. It's like a vitrine. And so each um, kind of little compartment has, when you listen, it's someone's story from that building. And then when you look inside, there's an object or a photo or a quote from their place. And so just to kind of give a, a portrait of this, um, this space that was really significant to me, but also to a lot of other people that's kind of gone now. But that idea of the archive I'm really interested in and how um, archives are really quite subjective. And I went to the BC archives um, at one point to look up um, information on my building. And all that was listed was who built it, when it was built, and who the architect was. And I thought that was really interesting because there's so much being left out, you know, and that's such a bureaucratic kind of um, way to think about it. And um, I just wanted to kind of give a, you know, my, my, my kind of view on this space and that time in my life, but through the eyes of everyone else as well. But obviously, as I was creating this sound piece, I was cho picking and choosing what I would put in. So even though there are other people's stories, it's incredibly subjective to my own opinion. So that just kind of made me think about how archives in general, you know, whoever's picking and choosing what goes in them, it's still someone is doing that. And 
that's what gets passed down as kind of the the memory of the space or the event. So yeah, so I was kind of playing with that. Um, and then I also have some still lives in the <laughs> still life photography and um, a lot of the objects in the photos came from uh, the building. So when I was, we had a very short time to leave and a lot of these people had lived there for so long, they were just getting rid of a ton of stuff, leaving it on the street in boxes. And so I started collecting them and creating these photographs as kind of portraits of um, them and that space, but I didn't necessarily know whose objects they were, and I would add some of my own into the into the works. And um, I was reading a lot about like the history of still life, the uh, the history of the still life as a genre in art, and it's really interesting because it is a genre that has been it's one of the oldest ones. It's been recorded in multiple cultures for a long time, um, but it's not critically uh, researched the way other genres are. And I read this book called Looking at the Overlooked by Norman Bryson, and he was talking about how um, he connects that back to kind of the patriarchal view of a woman's place in society, and also deep, kind of in a deeper way how women artists haven't been, have been overlooked over time in kind of what gets considered in the art history canon. And so um, the idea of a still life referencing the domestic and um, kind of the objects referencing the body and that idea that the domestic is kind of undervalued um, kind of goes back to the idea of females being undervalued. So I took all these kind of objects in the photos and made portraits of female artists that I admired that are now dead and kind of um, also poking fun at this idea about, um, I had read an article also uh, kind of um, measuring statistically how really big female artists, once they die, they're labeled as forgotten in the media as a way to kind of hype up their exhibitions or their retrospectives, but that's not something that applies to men usually when they die. And there's actually kind of like a study that's been done on you know people like Anna Mendieta or Merritt Oppenheim who had big shows at the MoMA, but they're still being called forgotten. You know, I think that's an interesting thing and how that relates to the still life. So um, yeah, so that's what those images are. Um, yeah, and then kind of the rest of the exhibit is mostly um, stories and a combination of kind of documentary photography, still life photography, sound, uh, and text, and then a video um, that I did with someone who was part of the apartment, um, yeah, as well. And so kind of a collaborative performance that we did based on his memories of living there. Yeah. <laughs>